come to part T, finalizing, this will be our last chapter. We'll be going through the renders that we did for the previous uh, two tutorials and we're going to color correct them and grade them. So first we'll start with the uh, I'm calling it the, the glass sculpture. Um, I've already have it here open in Photoshop. So let's dive in. So I'll start in this case to rotate it um, 90 degrees. Uh, when I did it initially, uh, I wasn't sure if this would be for a phone or for a laptop, but, um, but since we end up doing the mock-up for the phone, um, I thought it's easier to just, as we grade them, do it already in those 90 degrees. So I'm going to add a new adjustment layer, color lookup, and this is uh, using LUTs. So Photoshop has its own. This is the list that comes with it. And you can also load other 3D LUTs. You can find uh, a lot of the packs online. I usually uh, use this once in a while, um, just to kind of give me a quick overview of different colors and looks that I can have with my render. Uh, I tend to use it a lot the, if I'm using this uh, effect, either the Fuji or Kodak. Um, so as I see here, it's quite nice. It's a bit intense, the effects. So I may just do 50%, which I think is pretty good. And then, um, let's go again and do another adjustment layer, another color lookup. And since I used Kodak on the previous one, on this one, uh, I think I will probably go for the Fuji. I'm just layering things up and see how it, it goes the colors on this one were a bit more intense. So sometimes I do like to experiment with this uh, uh, LUTs to just kind of bring a new look to it. I'm kind of liking this more bright um, look to it as we can compare it to the, the render, but it's lost a bit of this definition and contrast. So to solve that, let's add some levels. And here on the levels, let's just push this to kind of fill up into the this uh, graph. So that's always a good way to start. And we can already see that um, we already have a bit more of that contrast back that we lost by adding those um, LUTs on top of the render image. So let's now add a, another adjustment layer. This time I just want to bring a bit up the saturation. I do sometimes play a bit with the hue. Um, if I find some nice color combinations, I'll just go back into 3D and, and add those there. Uh, so this is a quick way for me to quickly test things out uh, while in 3D could take a little bit longer. But in this case, I'm quite happy with the colors, so I'm just pushing a bit the saturation um, to really uh, punch in those colors. All right, now that we're happy with that, I'm going to keep on layering uh, new ones, and this time I'm going to use color balance, which I use quite often. Uh, uh, by default, it starts on the mid-tones, and I like to, again, uh, experiment if I want them more in the cold uh, look or in the more warmth. Um, and then I decide that uh, as I'm testing that I want it to actually be more on the blues. Um, so usually I tend to change a lot the mid-tones uh, with the higher values. And then once we're happy with um, what we have, uh, in this case, we're going more for the blue tint. We can go to the other tones like shadows and highlights. So again, with the shadows, I like to test it a bit. Even if I have an idea in my head, um, it's always good because we see it uh, live feedback for it. Um, and I'm just experimenting with the tones because I don't want it to go fully uh, blue as well because obviously we don't want to blend too much into those tones. So it's good to put push back a few of the colors back into the image and the render. With the highlights, this is usually the one that I change the least, or when I change these smaller values, um, because um, I don't want to change too much the highlights, because uh, it's already from the light that I'm using in, in Cinema 4D, um, and usually in this case, as you see, tints a lot, um, the render. So I'm just going to keep it to very low um, numbers. And if we compare now, um, we see that it's much better now the colors. <clears throat> so this is a process that I do quite often. Instead of trying a lot of different things in 3D, waiting for the renders to see the details, uh, I just uh, come to Photoshop or After Effects, depending um, if I'm doing animation, um, and I test it. So I'm quite happy with how it looks. So now what I usually do is um, 
adding some sharpening on top and some chromatic aberration. So for that, I usually select the whole image. I copy it and I paste it back in place. And let's uh, name this as a sharpening. And I'm also going to convert it into a smart object layer. Um, this is to show as well as, I, I don't always use it, but this is good to show as well that uh, to keep it again in the, the theme of the procedural that we can change it later. So the way I do my sharpening is with a filter called high pass. Um, and you see it's a gray image. If I zoom in, you see there's this details that is kind of passing through. And the way we do it is we need to change the blending mode. So any of these ones from overlay, hard light, soft light will work. I usually go between soft light and hard light. And then depending on, on the image, I may change the opacity. I don't know if it's, uh, uh, if you can see it in the recording, but uh, there's definitely a punching in a bit of the details. And because we added this as a smart object layer, we can double click on the effect and we can change it again and we'll update live. So that's the good thing about having these filters on, a, on even if it makes your Photoshop file a bit bigger, it does have the benefits of you can change uh, later to other settings. Now that uh, we're happy with this, I'm going to copy it again and du uh, or duplicate it, the whole thing, and I'm going to do chromatic aberration. Uh, there's different ways of doing this, but my my preferred way is doing a blend option. And then he here on the channels, I just remove two of them. Um, it depends on the image. In this case, I'm just showing you that it shows a yellow uh, version of it. And I just zoom in and then I just, with a keyboard, I just shift a little bit up and down and we get that fringe, nice fringe that you'll get if you're taking a picture or filming. Once we're happy with the image, I want to test it in the mock-up that we did, uh, that we uh, set up on the first uh, tutorial. So let's, I already have it open, so let's double click. Again, remember that this is not the correct aspect ratio, but it's just, we're just using a mock-up, it's just for us to kind of see how it would look. Once we're happy, we'll see, and then as we done that, I did it in the first one, I can see that it's, it should be going to the other side, so I'm just going to flip the image to leave some space for the text that shows up on the screen. I think this should be good, so let's save it. And yeah, I think that's working great. So um, with this one, I'll just save it, save both images the, uh, in the mockup and the normal one. Also, uh, remember this is like, there's things here that I would change some highlights, but the main focus here is to show the client some um, some of the image and the ideas, and then we they would come back with some feedback. Um, some of the highlights are a bit harsh and in the blue tones there, but for now it's good. Now we are on the second image, the strange flower, and I can see right away that it was quite dark. So I'll start uh, by adding, obviously first flipping, but I'll start by adding levels, the similar way we did with the previous one but I'm going to start right away with that uh, just to level it up. And again, I tend to just start first by pushing um, this, dragging this into the graph and it already looks much better. Obviously this image is a bit different from the previous one, which is this one is more monotone. So I use accordingly. So I'm going to go into the hue saturation. Again, this image works quite well with just tinting it and hueing it to just different uh, um, colors, I like what I render, um, maybe a little bit more on the less pink, uh, so I'll maybe uh, adjust it a bit to that. Saturation I think is quite good, um, but yeah, I'll do the U probably on the, a bit on the orange and reds instead of the pinks. And saturation, I don't want to push it too much. All right, I think that is looking great. Now we go in again and we had uh, the color balance, like I did as well on the previous one. I, I do tend to use this quite a lot, either this color balance or selective color. I just like this one, I like that it's an overall, I call it tint in the mid-tone shadows and highlights. Selective colors is more in per color, yellows and things like that, and you can change depending on those. So overall, I always tend to go first for this one, if I don't have a specific thing in mind. And again, the mid-tones is my main one, trying exploring if I want it cold or warmer. And then once I'm happy, I'll go to the shadows. Just again, changing. Uh, a lot of times, like I said, it's small values uh, in the negative or in the positive. And 
Then finishing in the highlights. Again, this one is the one that I use the least and smaller um, values. Um, but here you can see it's changing quite a lot of the background uh, color, uh, which um, helps me as well distinguish a bit the background from the actual uh, object or flower. So this was, it was great to help again, give that difference between those two. So now I'm going to do the copying it and pasting it again. And we're not, we're going to use another effect, a filter, um, which is called camera raw. So I'm going to go again and do it as a smart object. So I can go back and change it whenever I want, keep it procedural and this filter um, is used a lot, especially if you have pictures in RAW, it will open automatically in Photoshop. Um, and I like it because it's it has so many cool things to use right away uh, in just one filter. Um, the temperature, the tint, um, again, brings it so much that you can play. And those things that you'd think on a camera exposure, even the contrast and highlights, um, it's just really good to just um, come here and then change how much the shadows, if they're darker or light, how much the whites you can see. And, and it has these things like texture, clarity, dehaze, um, which uh, can make it even more, um, you can see more of the texture, like you can make it more defined, some of the things you have in the image, uh, like the clarity and texture, and the dehaze can make it look very um, dreamy as well, if you want, depending on the image. So I, I tend to um, use this uh, quite often as well. Um, obviously, I was just playing now with the values to show you, but uh, I usually then go and bring out the values that I found to be good for this image. Now with the texture, I, like I said, I really like this textural clarity and the haze. It does sometimes bring a lot from the image. Um, I was playing a lot with um, first if, it, if I wanted more dreamy look uh, or if I wanted much more contrasty. Um, so it's it's definitely um, good to experiment and, and try. And with the vibrance and saturation, it does really depend on the images. Um, obviously, one of the briefs was uh, part of the brief was to make it pop, right? And be, uh, you know, showcase the, the cool thing on the screen. Uh, and what I like here is you see, I'm toggling uh, this button, which shows what we had before and with this new effect. And there's a lot of stuff here. I don't use everything, but I also like to use sometimes the vignetting, uh, not obviously hundred percent, but just slightly, uh, give it a little, a little bit of something. And you can also put grain here and also, you can also do chromatic abrasion in here, but I do prefer the technique that I used, uh, in the previous image. Uh, and again here. The same, you can just uh, double click here and you can go back into what you've just been, uh, all those settings, change it again if something doesn't look great, save it and then you're, you have it. So that's why I like to use a smart object layer and I really recommended it. So I think I'm pretty happy with the image as it looks. So we'll just finalize it the same way that we did with the glass sculpture. So we're gonna select it, copy it, everything and then paste it in place. And we'll do the high pass. If you have different effects, you can add it all into the smart, the same smart object. Uh, but because I know that with um, sharpening, I want to change the blending mode. So they do need to be separate uh, layers, but you can add more filters on top of each other in the same smart object. For in this case, I'm not actually putting smart object layer because I've tested these values and I know it works. But again, I always tend to leave it as a smart object layer so I can always adjust without having to go back and forth. Chromatic erosion will do the same as before, but this time I'm going to select a different channel for this image. And we'll just go again, zoom in and just adjust. And now you see that blue uh, fringe around it. Again, it's just small details to help uh, really sell this this image and you, you see I can go back and change it at any time which channel I want but we'll keep it with uh, the red channel so now we'll do the same I'm going to copy and paste it into our uh, mock-up I'm just going to scale it adjust it a little bit and to the side and let's see now how it looks so let's apply save it 
Yeah, I think this works pretty good, even if obviously on the top is a bit um, uh, hidden the text, but it's never going to uh, be perfect. And, and we can tell the client and we can see if we rotate it later on. So these are then the two images that we created. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, that you learned something from it. Um, and um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos. So thank you again for watching all this uh, four part series um, and uh, would love to see the results.